Hey everybody, in today's lesson, I wanna talk about some more Charlie Parker melodies and take a deeper dive into those melodies and talk about what makes them so great. If you haven't checked out my previous video on this topic, make sure to click the link in the description below. In this week's video, we'll be taking apart the melody of Confirmation. Let's check it out right now. So here's the melody to Confirmation. such an amazing study on good rhythms and good phrases. These two things are what really makes Parker stand out from the rest, in my opinion. Let's take a deeper dive into what's going on in these lines. So we start out with this phrase. So right off the bat, we get this jump of a sixth interval. The sixth is a very important interval in bebop, but is also just a good interval to get in our ears. Make sure to practice your scales in sixths. Once you have that down, try starting your lines with the interval of a sixth, or stick them at the end of your lines. You could also just play a major scale going up or down, and try randomly jumping uh, a sixth interval in that scale. And sometimes you can create lines out of it, such as this example. Now we have this phrase. This is a great minor 2-5 lick that uses the 6 interval again, as well as a triad. So Parker walks up the root of our 2 chord, and then goes to the 3rd of the 2 chord, and then goes down a G minor triad. The G minor triad is part of our E minor 7 flat 5 chord, because the G is the flat 3rd, the B flat is the flat 5th, and finally the D is the flat 7th of our E half diminished chord. Then he jumps from the root of our dominant 7 chord to the 3rd, which is again a jump of a 6th. This would be a good 2-5 phrase to learn in as many different keys as possible. The next couple phrases sound like this. This is a great example of mixing blues into our lines. Over the B-flat 7, Parker is just playing around the F blues scale. So if we have a dominant chord, we can play the blues scale based off the 5th of that dominant chord, and it's going to work. The next phrase is a great dominant line, which sounds like this. We can make it into a 5-1 phrase by resolving this line like this. Or we can make it into a whole 2-5-1 phrase by adding a line before it, which could sound like this. The next line sounds like this. This is again a great 5-1 phrase. What's cool about this one is it has not only a 6 interval in it, but has a couple small guide tone lines from the flat 9 of our dominant chord going down to the root, and the 4th of our dominant chord resolving to the 3rd.
Here's a line that uses these exact concepts. The next phrase is a good example of a couple things. One being Parker's ability to resolve the fourth to the third, like we had in our last example, and also being able to land on an altered tone, like the sharp nine, flat nine, flat five, or sharp five. So the first part of this line is simply the fourth going to the third of our chord. So for example, uh, over a major chord, I want you to start on the fourth. I know that's kind of a bad thing to do, but Parker does this a lot, and that fourth can resolve to the third, and it creates a little bit of tension and release in our lines. Parker then jumps to an alter tone of the dominant chord we're playing over. In this case, it's the flat five of our A7. After that, he mostly plays uh, around with different variations of the same ideas, such as playing blues over the dominant chord. Then he finishes the A section of this tune with a great 5 to 1 phrase, which sounds like this. This is a great phrase to end our lines with. Here's an example of a way that you could use this phrase to end one of your lines. Now before we go on, I want to play a small etude over the first part of the A section of confirmation. I'll do this using the ideas that we've covered so far in Parker's Melody. Make sure to do this step yourself and build your own etude using these lines. So now we reach the B section of this tune. The first line sounds like this. This is what's called Kesh, chromatic embellishment of static harmony. This is when you take one note, in this case the root of our two chord, and move it up or down chromatically through the changes. So Parker uses Kesh like this. Here's another example of a line using Kesh. The next line has a great closing phrase, which I use all the time, that sounds like this. Here's an example of using that phrase to close a line. Then finally, we finish the B section with this super cool 5-1 line. So now that we've covered most areas of the melody, we have to think about how we're going to organize the information that we took from it. What I would do is make a lick journal, so to speak, and categorize all the different components that we took from this melody. Put all the five to one phrases together. Put all the Kesh phrases together. Put all the altered phrases together, and so on and so on. Once you have everything written out like this, it's going to be a lot easier to digest this information, and thus easier to put in your plane, and easier to improvise with. Just plug and chug them over different changes. Also remember that it's not just about theory on this melody, it's also about rhythm. Parker's rhythm is so important, and make sure that your lines aren't just consistent eighth notes. I could do a whole video on this topic. Let me know if you want me to do that in the comment section below. So now I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to play you one chorus of a written out etude using the concepts that we've covered from this lesson taken from Parker's Melody.
you guys so much for watching this video about confirmation and all the hidden secrets that this melody has. If you like this style of video where I take bebop heads and deconstruct them and put them back together, let me know in the comment section and I can continue this uh, video series. Also, if you want to know more about my playing, make sure to check out my newly released record, Each Step, on Origin Records. Uh, you can get it anywhere, Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, whatever you like. Also, if you like what you're seeing, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it immensely helps me and it helps this channel grow and it lets me continue doing these videos for you guys. All right, thanks again for watching and remember to always keep swinging.